Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Royce Rambles, where I pick a topic and just spout off junk about it. <laughs> Today's topic, is, we're at the tail end of Pride Month. I really haven't been uploading a lot this month. I do apologize about that. Um... The month started off pretty weird, and I work in an industry that's very busy during the summertime, so a lot of it is just me not, me being too tired to upload sometimes. Anyway, today we have ba -da -ba -ba, the Everyone is Awesome Pride Month Lego set. Now, I'm not much of a Lego person. I actually just bought this because the proceeds were going to charity. Also, it was, it, it, also, it's just uh, a very nice piece. I'm not a big fan of the design of the, of this, like, wave pattern they have here. I think a rainbow would have been better, or maybe a representation of the flag that's got, like, the little arrow with the Black Lives Matter stuff in it, and then the trans rights, and then the traditional LGBTQ flag at, at kind of the corner there. Um, but... It's a very nice piece because it's got this lovely, like, little gradient to it where it's all these different people coming together, all these different nice little hairstyles and stuff. Um, one of my co-workers, who's a bit of a Lego freak, but is also a bit of a other things that I can't go into, said that this was actually a, a lot of people really wanted this piece, not because of the... Uh, not because of the progressive nature of it, but because it has these uh, monochromatic figures where they're just one color. And he was actually looking at the bootleg version, which was half parody because it just had a bunch of uh, single color characters with a bunch of different colors. But it actually did kind of look cool. Like, I think there was like a pirate one that was all gold or something. Anyway... Um, but yeah, this, uh, and th this design is a little weird because it's so back heavy. Like, look, like, like, you can see how it's got a very flat plane on the bottom and then this very thick part up here. And this is all Lego, like, there's, it's not hollow. And also, like, I, I don't want to do it right now because it is actually pretty well on at the moment, but... If it falls over, it can become detached pretty easy. And, of course, there's a dusting issue. Um, you have to take off all the little dudes if you want to get between them. Or people, I should say, people. The minifigures, let's call them what they are. Um, but, yeah, and I do like how each one is sort of reflective of it. So... From what I understand, the black stripe is not meant to be specifically part of the Black Lives Matter part, but it's supposed to be for the uh, members across the spectrum as well as the Black Lives people who have died in progress. But they still give her a, a nice little uh, sort of like <clears throat> braids or dreadlocks, something like that, and an updo. And for Black Lives Matter, you have a lovely little afro. Then for the LGBTQ spectrum, you have this dude with a lovely faux hawk, this lady with a nice little ponytail with a swirly bit at the front, this person with a bowl cut, this person with long hair, this person with a pompadour, this person with a beehive, and then for the trans rights specifically, you have a presumably trans man, non-binary, and trans woman character. Obviously, you know, they're... <laughs> they're rendered in the barest thing possible, so... Um, I will say, though, also, it, it makes it really hard to pose them in this area, because you can't really bend them forward too much. Although you can... Although one thing that I like to do is have each of their arms be a little... Uh, more raised than the last... Ah! A little more raised than the last. However, that does unfortunately create one of them will be having their hand in the uh, be, because like the, the obviously the end goal would be to have the last person just raising their hand up like ah like a you know a bender at the end of Breakfast Club. But obviously the obvious problem with that is that w one poor soul will be stuck with a Heil Hitler pose. Um. 
Oh, also that they can only go so far. Because, like, their heads are blocking the way. I mean, they're fully 360 poseable, but... Or, you know, the arm has a full 360 degree of movement, but... Not with the not with the hair piece in the way. And these are very nice hair pieces, too. Like, I, the Legos I had as a kid did not have these well-rendered hair pieces. And, of course, I wasn't real... But I wasn't really a Lego kid. The only Lego set I had was... There was an action guy one where I think his name was like Max Power or something. Not not like not like Homer in, in that episode of The Simpsons, but like something akin to that. Um, and then I had Aragog's Lair, which I was surprised to find was still being printed up to a couple years ago. Like that set came out when Chamber of Secrets came out. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, I, I did kind of get into Legos for a little bit, just right after Lego Movie 2 came out, because I saw that one and I really, really liked it. Um, I don't know, I was kind of depressed at the time, and it just had a very, like, you know... It kind of had the opposite message of the previous... Not the opposite message, but, like, the... It was a good appendices to the previous film where it's like no not everything's gonna be good all the time but you should work to make it better um anyway uh yeah i got into lego for a brief bit during that time and i got a uh i got a reinhardt a diva the the heart thing that that uh what's his face makes for her And then, I will say that with the Lego Movie Part 2, I didn't like the, I didn't like live action segments. Um, I don't think that Maya Rudolph was a good pick for the mom. She was too corny and f funny. I think they should have gone for someone who's less iconic. Like, yeah, yeah, they got Will Ferrell for the last one. But... I don't did Maya Rudolph even play any character in the act? Because, like, the reason Will Ferrell played the dad is because he also played Lord Business. But I don't think I remember the mom playing any character in the Lego movie, too. I don't know. Um... Oh, another thing that I kind of got into, because my cousin got into it, was uh, the Lego minifig game, where it was a Lego multiverse or something. I can't remember what it's called, but basically, uh, this, like, weird energy guy voiced by Gary Oldman starts stealing people from across the Lego multiverse. And so Gandalf, Batman, and uh, Wildstyle have to team up to fight them. And it's really good. You got Tom Kane as uh, as Gandalf, uh, Troy Baker as Lego Batman, and then I think, and then the lady who voiced Wild Style movies reprises her role. And of course, it's got a bunch of cameos. Like you have uh, the Thirteenth Doctor, no, the Twelfth Doctor. I think Peter Capaldi. Yeah, the Peter Capaldi Doctor. I don't. I think he's twelve. I can't remember. He might be 13. I, I, anyway, that was a good level, actually. My cousin was surprised and terrified by the uh, Weeping Angels, because he didn't know about Weeping Angels before then. And then you have to fight GLaDOS, and you summon HAL 9000. Oh, that's so fun. Um, that is a really good game, and, like, if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it, but it will be expensive, because, like, you have to pay for the apparat, you know, the game, then also the apparatus that goes with it. Uh, and even then, you have to get a bunch of Lego figures to go with it. Because, like, it's not the Lego figure itself, it's this little chip that's in the base. Uh, but I should get back to this. this. This is equal parts about Lego, but it's also about pride. Now, I, 
I'm not exactly comfortable discussing my sexuality on here. Let's, I will say that I do like women. I, I will leave it at that. Let's, I would not necessarily call myself... We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm arrow ace, or I wouldn't say that I'm aromantic or asexual, but I do feel a certain level of anxiety discussing sexuality with people. You know, I don't like talking about sex stuff outside of maybe either a purely comedic or a purely, uh, mm, sterile context, like, I'm more than willing to say, like, oh, well, you know, apparently, uh, you know, like, I'm more than willing to say, like, you know, like, oh, the Supreme Court is denying women, you know, rights to their bodies, stuff like that, but I'm, you know, I, I don't want to talk about, like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything else about that. Anyway, um, I do also live in an area that's not necessarily receptive to uh, LGBTQ people. Sadly, um, without getting too much into it, the local uh, government has was trying to illegalize trans athletes back during the Trump administration and is still trying to do it and because the Supreme Court is still packed with Trump people oh well I don't know and you know like it's people can say like oh well this is just for now no it's not just for now things that happen will have horrible consequences through the rest of history. The the Nazis burned down an institute dedicated to gender studies that was making leaps and bounds in the field of LGBTQ, you know, stuff. The books that they were burning were about gay people, lesbians, trans people. And... Nowadays, people are like, oh, well, you know, uh, trans people was just a recent thing. Bleh. No, they weren't. They've been around forever. The gay people have been around forever. For the love of God, do you know what lesbians are named after? They're named after a, a ancient Grecian poet. Sapphos, who wrote about the island of Lesbos. You know, it... it You could even joke that the ancient Greeks invented lesbians. Uh, according to some people, they also invented gay people too, because there was some apparently some stuff about the Spartan army. I don't, I don't necessarily buy into that part much because, like to me, the patriarchy has always been kind of toxic and anti, you know, anti-gay or homophobic. I should say homophobic. Um. That's also what I think about, like, the, uh, you know, the, the whole thing with the, the, the Romans. People love saying, like, oh, the Romans, for all their fascist tendencies, were really into, uh, you know, what, what happens on Tua stays on Tua, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Historians like to whitewash history, but they also like to put their own headcanon on history. You know, like, if you find two two dudes buried together in a way where you would bury a married couple, and they say that they're best friends, that's whitewashing history. If you say that gay sex was really common in the Roman Empire, I kind of have to doubt that a little bit, because, I mean, like, the Roman Empire did influence a lot of European culture, and let's be honest here, European culture, which became the cornerstone for American culture is kind of against things that it does not understand. I could be wrong, though. I, you know, that's, I have to preface this with that. I can always be wrong. I'm not a historian. I'm just a fat idiot. But with all that said, I do think that we need to do, that we do need to support LGBTQ 
he writes and, you know, keep, you know, like, make media that shows them and appreciates them. And give them an environment in which they are safe to live their life. Like, you know, if a kid wants to identify as a different gender, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be starting puberty blockers or whatever. They, that means that they just want to explore their options. And that is okay. It is okay to question your identity and then go back to the original one. You know, you don't have to do any of this. You don't have to fit into any one thing. And, like... I see people suffering every day who, because their families or their government has just totally betrayed them. And it, it hurts. It hurts in ways I can't imagine. Like, I have to count my blessings that I've just not been so, you know, that I haven't been targeted or anything. I don't know. This is a this is a good piece. And if you can get your hands on it for a decent price, I would. I don't know how much it's worth. I got it when it was like I forget like 30 or 40 bucks back in 2020 or so. Um and this was one of the first kits I made actually when after I moved out of my apart out, out of my downstairs house. So when I, uh, when lightning struck my house, this was still in its box. And the fire department had to flood the house. Y Y'all know that. And the box to this was destroyed, and I'm like, well, the box is destroyed, I may as well build it. And it was a very nice, it was a very nice time. It's interesting seeing how these things connect together to make a bridge work. Like, you know, I said that this part, that these two pieces don't, stay together well if it falls down. But I will say, though, this piece is very sturdy. It has never come apart. Like, the outside looks like it's, you know, uh... One, two, three, four. Eleven different pieces, but it's all one piece. And there's, like, a lattice work inside that keeps it together. I just wish that lattice work also continued here so that it could withstand a little more roughhousing. Now, I, I, again, I was not a Lego kid, but I understand what they mean. They are for, they are the creative child story. It's like how Minecraft was a lot uh, an escape for a lot of kids. I didn't like Minecraft. I prefer games where you make a character and enter a pre-made world and get to interact with that world. Like, you know, Skyrim, I think, is the most obvious example. But for me, I prefer Oblivion or Fallout New Vegas because it, there's a lot more... There's a lot more, like, role-play potential there. I don't... I, I, I can't... I, I still need a level of, like, decent gameplay. So I think, like, you know, like, I, I tried my hand at Morrowind and it didn't really stick with me that well. I'll, I can try to get back into it, I don't know. But it's also, also it's just hard for me to get it into any video game these days because I just, I start playing it and I stop because I'm too tired all the time. Isn't that just the way you, you finally have the disposable income to support your lifestyle? Because you work a forty-hour-a-week job and you can't af and you can't afford any of the games. Well, no, you can't. Uh, uh, you can't a lot any of the time you want because you spend your weekend sleeping. <sighs> oh well. But I, I like this a lot. This you know, this has been on my shelf for over a year now, and not once have I looked at it and thought, "Man, I really wish I hadn't bought that," because. At the end of the day, I'm supporting a good cause. I'm supporting charities that help people who are black 
who are trans, who are gay, who are lesbian. People who have been hurt by society. People who need help. And, like, I don't want to be all white savior about it. But, you know, it's... I have a weird guilt complex where it's like, if I don't do the right thing, I will immediately go to hell. So, like, you know, I don't know. I, I, the, the paranoia that I go through is just weird. Like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for me today. You all have a good week. And for what it's worth, happy Pride Month. I'm sorry I missed most of it. I'll upload this the day of since I'm already kind of, you know, almost a month late with it. But, you know, it's... Pride Month may only be a month, but these people are themselves year-round, and they should be loved for it. You all have a good week. This is Royce Miller, signing out.